Today we are going to be going over 10 uh, popular veggies to grow in your vegetable garden. And I am going to be sharing with you some considerations for things that actually grow better here in Florida. What I'm going to be helping you do is identify things that do grow better here. They're going to have less pest issues. They're going to have um, less fungal issues. They're going to produce longer or more for you. So it's not to say that you can't grow the more traditional varieties, but what I'll share with you is what will truly thrive. Sweet peppers are an awesome fresh garden treat to be able to harvest, but unfortunately your traditional like bell pepper or sweet pepper that most of us would think about are rather challenging to grow here. Um, they're very nematode sensitive. They don't like the extreme temperatures, too cold, too hot. They're just picky and fussy and don't do well here. An alternative, which will produce handfuls and gobs of peppers for you over several years time is seasoning peppers. Now these are typically peppers that have been bred from hot peppers, things like habaneros and um, Anaheim and some things that have a little bit more spice to them, but they've bred um, the heat out of them. And so they're well adapted to growing here, but they still taste like the sweet peppers we're looking for. Um, they can be a little slow to germinate, but once they're established, they're going to produce handfuls of peppers for you over years. If you haven't been with this channel for a very long time, I am a huge leafy green fan, and my personal favorite probably is kale. So we like a lot of it, and we want it as long through the year as possible because we don't buy leafy greens, we only eat what we can grow. And so for me, it's really important to have a consistent kale source. Now I grow all sorts of different kinds of kale in the cooler winter months, but for the vast majority of the year, they're not gonna grow well here. Things like the curly kale or the red Russian kale are gonna be the first to fizzle out as the temperatures start to warm up. Lacinato kale, Tuscan kale, um, Italian kale, dinosaur kale, there's all different names for the same plant, but this kale will last much longer into the growing season with a little bit of afternoon shade. Very hardy crop. Um, and especially important as you head into the spring months when things do start to warm up. Tomatoes are always a crowd favorite. It's like that iconic garden plant. If you're growing a garden, most people end up putting in some tomatoes. Um, and it's great because they have so much flavor compared to the store-bought crap. While they do good over our fall and winter months, especially heading into like the spring and early summertime, they really struggle here. So. If you're planting tomatoes in the garden, don't plant those large slicer beef steak um, heavy tomatoes, especially heading into our warmer, dry than rainy months um, because they will split crack and you'll never get a darn thing out of them. The leaf footed bugs will find them, something will. Instead, plant cherry tomatoes, plum tomatoes, or ideally, Current tomatoes. The Everglades tomato is a current type tomato and it grows wild here in Florida. So when you plant something that can take our sandy soil, can take the heat, can take the bugs, can take the fungal issues and still produce bucketfuls of tomatoes, probably a better option. Radish is one of the fastest growing crops and is one that you'll often see in books as being like, if you're new to growing, if you're gardening with kids, uh, and it's true, but again, they don't like our heat and humidity of the summer months. So for, you know, a third of the year, we can grow tasty, delicious French breakfast radish and all of your traditional radish varieties. What do we do about the rest of the year when we're trying to meet our own needs? Rat tail radish is a fantastic alternative. Um, it is a radish that has been selected for the seed pods rather than the root. So obviously most of the radishes that we, we eat, we pull it from the ground, we're eating the root of that plant. Um, this one instead goes to flower, and when it produces the seed pods, they stay nice and tender. So they have the exact same flavor as the root does, but you're eating the seed pod instead. 
and so you'll have a longer season. You'll be able to harvest handfuls and handfuls of the seed pods off of one plant, whereas obviously you pull one radish, you get one radish. Cucumbers are a fan favorite for a lot of us, and they are delicious, but um, out of all the crops, at least in my experience and opinion, are typically the most challenging to grow, even so, more so than squash. Um, they have zero tolerance for extreme temperatures. They don't like any sort of humidity. They're also susceptible to things like squash vine borers and all sorts of pests. Um, so it is incredibly challenging to grow here. So over the years, I keep trying and trying because I do absolutely enjoy my cucumbers and pickles. Um, and I have found that gherkins, so uh, Mexican sour gherkins, or even burr gherkins, grow much, much easier here than your traditional long slicing cucumber. Um, they have a thinner stem, so they cannot um, be penetrated by the squash vine borers, so that's just completely issue eliminated. Um, they are very tenacious and hardy. Um, they might get some powdery mildew, but the whole plant just bounces right back. Um, I've had them die two or three times, die two or three times within the same season, and then they just burst forth with more growth and more melons for me to harvest. Um, so although they are small, the flavor, in my opinion, is identical. You just don't have um, the, the size or the slicing potential that you would from a traditional cucumber. I love garlic a lot. Uh, when I first started my gardening journey in Florida, that was one of the first crops I tried growing, and I probably tried for nearly two decades to grow it. Um, and every time I'd get a little bit closer, but never quite there. Uh, they like consistent, long, cool weather. Clearly, we don't have it here. So instead, it's not a perfect alternative, but garlic chives. Garlic chives have that nice garlicky onion flavor. You can chop them up and put them into soups to flavor it, um, stir fries, eggs, whatever. It's not gonna have that same chunky, super, super, super strong flavor, but it's gonna be a passable option for most of us. And this grows like a freaking weed here. I pulled my garlic chives out of my aunt's garden that had taken over her entire bed. Um, and so I just literally ripped them out of the ground, planted them at my garden, and I've been able to propagate it exactly like she did um, since that time. Squash is probably nearly one of the hardest crops to grow here. Certainly not at all impossible but they are problematic. They get pests, they get fungal issues, they have a very short lifespan. They're just a handful, to be completely honest. Um, I do have some tricks on how to get over some of those hurdles in a video all about squash here in Florida, but I actually have two alternatives that are even easier to grow and are better substitutes for summer squash. Now, instead of planting your yellow crooked neck or your zucchini, which can be grown but are challenging, um, instead consider planting Chinese python snake bean or loofah. A lot of people completely overlook loofah as a edible option. They'll grow them for the sponges and completely miss the fact that when picked young, they are a delicious squash substitute. I think they're the closest passing alternative for a summer squash when you pick them young, when they're one to maybe two inches max in thickness. They taste just like it. You chop it up, you throw it in your stir fries, you saute it and use it as a side dish, you make zucchini bread, whatever you want. It's amazing and super, super productive. The other option is a little bit more unique. It grows really well here, but it's Chinese python snake bean. Now the skin of this is a little thicker, so it's not an identical squash substitute, but they're really tasty and they taste just like it and they cook just like it. So I will happily use the um, snake bean as a squash alternative, even in the summer months. Both of them are vines, so you will have to have some space for them to crawl. If you have less space, Chinese python snake bean is going to be a better option for you. They're more compact vines. Lufa is going to take a lot more room. Spinach is a very iconic leafy green. A lot of us consume it on a very regular basis. And for most of the country, it's a nice, easy crop to grow. But it needs consistent, cool weather. Clearly, we do not have that here. Now, some of the other crops that I've talked to you about, 
Um, you can push the limits if you're willing to deal with some pest pressure or some fungal issues or whatnot. You can still grow those foods. In my experience, especially if you're not in the panhandle, you just can't get Bloomsdale spinach, traditional spinach, to grow here. It just won't even germinate if the soil temperatures are too hot or it will germinate and quickly die. Instead, plant Chi Jimisai. Chi Jimisai is a wonderful leafy green and I'm not joking or exaggerating when I say it looks just like it, it tastes just like it, and it cooks just like it. This is a perfect substitute for growing spinach here in Florida, yet it has none of the issues. If I plant this in the shade, I have had this last into July, which is just absolutely phenomenal for leafy greens here in Florida. Um, so make sure if you do wanna have it nearly year round to plant it in shade or just a small amount of morning light. I don't know about you, but every time I buy a, uh, a stalk of celery, a bundle of celery. You use two stalks and then the rest of it just rots away in the fridge. Um, celery can be grown here. It's got a pretty short window. It's long germination too. You see it in winter, it grows in early spring and it fizzles out pretty quickly. And again, you're with that same problem. You use your couple of stalks and then what do you do with the rest of it, right? Ford Hook Swiss chard is typically a chard grown for leafy greens, but it has huge leaves and super thick stalks. The stalk on Ford Hook is exactly like celery. It's maybe slightly, slightly more bitter, a little tiny bit, but for me, I've passed it as celery on numerous occasions and nobody ever knows the difference. I will chop it up and put it in my soups. I'll do ants on a log with it. Pretty much anything that you're gonna do with celery, you can do with Ford Hook Swiss chard. Um, and a bonus, you get the leafy greens in addition to the stems. And what's nice about this is it will grow for, depending on where you are in the state, the vast majority of the year, at least two thirds of the year. And you can go out there and harvest that single stalk at a time. So you're not stuck with this entire plant that you're trying to use before it goes bad. Beans are a very easy to grow, um, typically well-producing plants to grow in your vegetable garden. Most of us typically are gonna immediately go towards like the green bean or string bean. And most of them are grown as bush beans. Um, they are on a small plant, nice and compact. It is good for containers, but you get this flush of growth um, and variety dependence. Um, you should get reasonable yields, but then it quickly dies. Instead of planting something like that, think about planting long beans. Yard long beans are a wonderful crop for here in Florida. Now they do grow a little different. Instead of it being a nice compact, um, small bushy plant, it is a vine or a pole bean. Um, so it's going to need something to climb, but as long as you have space for that, they are going to be producing much higher yields over a way longer period of time. They're better adapted to um, fungal issues and bacterial issues, which are prevalent here in Florida, and they're going to produce overall better for you in our climate. Hopefully this short list of planting this, not that, for growing food here in Florida was helpful. If so, um, and you're interested in finding some of these more unique seed varieties, I do have a seed shop online where we ship um, and mail out heirloom seed varieties that are all curated for growing well here in Florida. So if you're interested in checking out the shop and supporting the work that I do, um, head on down below to the show notes and we will have a link there for you to check out some of these awesome heirloom seeds.